Fantasy Football Factory Week Trace. We got the King of the South, Mincy, to my right. We got Moody on the sticks. We got myself, Stephen Che. Welcome in. We are presented by DraftKings. College football fans, what a slate of games we have for this week. And I can't wait to sit on my couch with the remote in one hand and my phone loaded up with the DraftKings Pick 6 app. And you know, right now you can get into the action with the DraftKings Pick 6 app, a brand new way to play daily fantasy sports. All new customers who play $5 are going to get $50 in Pick 6 credits. Just put together a list of three to six players and select more or less of a player set. Very easy, very translatable from fantasy. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app now. Sign up with code FACTORY, F-A-C-T-O-R-Y, only on the DraftKings Pick 6 app. The crown is yours. Mincy, fantasy football teams everywhere are in shambles. It's a body count. Shambles. Um, I made a fake graphic the other day just of a, a lineup that was completely out. We got Jordan Love <laughs> injured. Two, uh, obviously, very scary injury last Thursday night. Uh, he's going to be out several weeks. Amonra St. Brown went down, unsure of the severity of it, was unable to play um, the final few snaps of a very close Lions-Bucks game. Cooper Cup went out early and was listed out almost immediately. Uh, Debo Samuel hurt, going to be out a couple weeks with a ca uh, I believe it's a calf. Calf strain. Um, Christian McCaffrey put on IR officially, which is a little bit of a deep breath. At least you can move him to that spot. But for at least four weeks to be out is, is a tough pill to swallow for almost unanimous first overall pick in all leagues. Kenneth Walker the third, Joe Mixon uh, can't play. He did return to the game. It looked kind of like a bad injury, though, so I'm interested to see what his prognosis is. Rashad White went down. He did return to the game. Uh, and then Evan Ingram hurt in warm-ups. And then, and you didn't even mention AJ Brown. Did AJ Brown, yes, uh, injured uh, in practice on Friday. Misses the Monday Night Football game. Yeah, and he's so. out a few weeks there. Though. Yes. So, um, how are we feeling about? We're taping this Wednesday morning, so in you know almost all league formats, waivers have cleared. Um, who are your top targets this week? Yeah, and then the last one to mention is Isaiah Pacheco breaking. Pacheco, his fibula. yes. Yeah. Oh I mean, there's gosh. so many that it's like almost hard to remember. Pacheco's what six to eight weeks? Six already? to eight weeks, and it's a broken fibula. Yep. So, it, yeah, so it was a body count. There's a lot of situations to break down here. First of all, the 201 is – that's the worst because there's no solution. If you have Tyree Kill or Waddle, you are just like you, – you have to play them and you're just kind of screwed because yeah. Skylar Thompson's not a good passer. And we've they seen him – pro bowler, Tyler Huntley. Yep. Yeah, well, we'll see. Uh, this, might, But that's a situation where there's really no solution. Yep. The Chiefs running back situation is interesting uh, – in my league, somebody spent eight hundred and sixteen of their thousand dollars on Carson Steele when no one else bid on him. Oh, <laughs> uh, which I thought was pretty funny. But Cream Hunt being signed to the practice squad. Look, I know he's twenty nine, but I I think they don't bring. You know, he won the rushing title for KC back when Alex Smith was playing quarterback his second year. I actually think, you know, I don't know about this week, but I think he they're bringing him in to have a shot. Claude, Claude edwards alaire is a jag. He's just a yep. guy, like you said. And I know Carson Steele, like, I mean, I think he could be like a red zone vulture, but I just don't see him as like a 15-carry guy. I think Kareem Hunt is going to be the guy in the backfield. No, Samaj P. Ryan is also another guy that people were targeting. He'll be a good third down. Third I, I could see it being Hunt. Hunt and P. Ryan is what I think eventually uh, ends up happening. So I like the Hunt or P. Ryan calls. Uh, some of the other ones, the Philly thing – you know, we saw Monday night, man. Losing A.J. Brown really, I mean, hurts that passing game a yeah. ton. And Devontae Smith, sure, he gets more targets, but they don't really have another receiver to compliment him. Yep. And so, uh, Dallas Goddard's, I think, value goes up a little bit. Didn't have a good game Monday, but I agree. No, but I think, you know, he, I think his value goes up some. The Rams thing, no cup, no nuqua, it's bad. And the thing is, they also have offensive tackle injuries. I mean, yeah. they're a total, total mess. And they got to play the Niners this week. That could be a lost season for them uh, really quick. They usually play pretty well against the Niners. But what do you think about uh, their receiving court? So we got um, – Demarcus Robinson, Demarcus Tyler, Robinson Tyler, Tyler Johnson, and Tyler Tutu Johnson, Atwell. Atwell. And, and – and Jordan Whittington. Yeah, the Texas rookie. He's my favorite of the bunch as like an actual fantasy flyer. I think we could see some uh, pretty good increases across the board for those guys. Also, Colby Parkinson, the tight end. Um, this is going to be, I think, a run first team. Uh, moving forward based on their personnel. They do live out of 11 personnel, which is typically um, uh, leads a little bit more passing with three wide receivers in the field. But I like Whittington of this group. He he really showed out in preseason when he got action. 
He wasn't super draftable in redraft leagues. I think keeper leagues, he's an absolute must pick up. But he wasn't super draftable in redraft leagues just because you knew you needed one, maybe even two injuries for him to be effective. But we're here now. Oh, we are. So I think that he is a guy who, you know, obviously showed what he could do in preseason, a similar type receiver to Puka Nakua. He's going to get his chance now, it looks like. Um, I, Tutu Atwell's kind of faded into the background of this group. But Tyler Johnson and... Um, uh, Robinson caught Robinson. a he caught a Robinson caught a forty something yarder. Yep. Sunday, but and man, he had the number three job before. Yeah, but it's a mess. I yep. mean, it's a mess. And I, I like your call on Whittington to step up as the season goes along. Mm -hmm. And he did get an end around touchdown week yep. one. Called back though. Yeah, call back. But it, I don't know. It just seems like a bad situation uh, where I wouldn't rush to necessarily pick up any of those guys. Uh, you know, I like the Whittington call on the longer game. But, you know, a lot of these situations just aren't real, like, cut and dry uh, with these injuries, like we said. I mean, it's a lot of tough spots. Uh, I think that you mentioned the Caffrey thing. At least there's some – Jordan Mason had 100 and a touchdown, and at least now you know on that front that, you know, he's the guy. Who is the most valuable backup running back right now? That started the season as a number two because we got – Bucky Irving potentially looking at a start if Rashad White is going to be out. We got Zach Charbonnet who had a hundred yard game, um, and I believe he scored uh, this past weekend against the Patriots. We got Jordan Mason. We got um, Joe Mixon. We're undetermined of his status. If so, potentially Cam Akers. Um, uh, who's the guy? Who's the rookie last year that, that uh, is on the team? Damian Pierce. Yeah. Who, who's ruled out Sunday? Um, and then Pacheco. We got you know obviously a. Uh, a tree a potential trio in that backfield is there one specific guy that you like i think it's probably gonna be mason but like we don't know what his his uh time frame is going to be to be the guy really well i the mason thing at least you know mccaffrey's on ir till early october what i expect on that situation is that even when mccaffrey comes back they're going to limit his workload and they'll both get like 10 or 15, you know 10 carries each okay it's kind of what i think because uh and then they'll use mccaffrey in the passing game because I think they've got to be careful with McCaffrey already having an Achilles and calf. And so I think they, they you know, right when he comes back, it's not going to be like he's getting the full workload. Mm -hmm. So I think, especially with the Shanahan running game and Trent Williams and that offensive line, I mean, Mason's already had two, 146 and 100 yards his first two games. So mm -hmm. I think he's kind of the obvious answer. Another name to mention, I don't know how it's going to shake out, but if Chase Brown ever gets more run in Cincy, he's got so much upside because he's got burst. Yep. And uh, he's a big play threat. So he's kind of one to watch. Maybe it's off the radar. I would also point out that De uh, Deontay Foreman in Cleveland got 14 carries this week. He wasn't particularly effective. But if you're desperate for like an RB that you can plug in potentially as an RB2, he could be a guy that you could – that. I would think is available or, you know, uh, was available for very cheap um, in redraft leagues. But, yeah, it is it is a tough scene uh, in the fantasy market. Most teams are going to have at least one of these guys. Yeah, it's – no, I mean, I, I feel like there's it's almost unavoidable. Yeah. The, the worst spot to me is because uh, Tyree Kill is a top two pick. And this Tua thing just kills Tyreek. And mm -hmm. there's just nothing you can do if you invest in a top two pick. You're obviously starting him every week. But, you know, I still think he's going to be like – pretty solid but man his value goes down just a ton last season he did not i believe he did not have a <gasps> single target uh, or single game with less than five targets mike mcdaniel's a very smart guy they're going to find ways to manufacture getting him the ball but yes two is obviously going to be a big upgrade over you know skylar thompson or snoop Huntley, whoever um they end up going with moving forward um all right let's talk about some uh some dfs and some uh, uh prices for these guys um interesting uh we saw some big price changes kyler murray went way up he's at sixty nine hundred dollars this week shout out moody on the kyler murray thing too because yeah. moody, moody was beating the drum on the kyler murray re-break out this year and man i mean they put on a show on sunday and then marvin harrison who had one yeah. for four the first game four for 130 and two touchdowns basically had that in the first quarter yeah um but you know arizona just like lighting it up and that's an interesting game because one thing, Stephen, you talk about a lot, mm -hmm. when you're analyzing DFS, look at the over-under totals because you want to get guys in the games that are going to have higher scoring. I mean, I know that's like a very basic, obvious point, but I feel like people kind of forget about that sometimes. In Detroit, Arizona, highest over-under of the week, 52, 52 and a half. And uh, this one looks like I think it could, it could get potentially wild. Yeah, so you mentioned Detroit, Arizona, 52 and a half. We've got um, – Philadelphia, New Orleans, 49 and a half, which is uh, second most. And then we have Baltimore, Dallas, 48 and a half. 
After that, there's a pretty or no, there's Kansas City. Uh, or no, that's, that's, that's but, Sunday night. Yeah, so that's that not going to be included in most uh, DFS things. But after that, there's a pretty precipitous drop off. There's Kansas City, Minnesota at 45 and a half. But after that, there's nothing above uh, 44, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, and so and look, it, 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 it there's a lot of lower scoring matchups uh, mm. predicted this week, especially that Chargers Steelers at 35 and a half. That one feels like it's just going to be an ugly. You know, Broncos, I mean, Bucks, 39 and a half. There are several in the 30s, which is Giants, Cleveland, which that might not even be a watchable game. Yeah, it's going to be rough. And so I, I think that you kind of got to focus on those higher scoring games. And then another thing with DFS, and we'll get into this as we set our teams, uh, join us in the Pardon My Take, $5, the, the yep. AWL League. That's a lot of fun to get to play with stoolies. And then uh, I always put a lineup into the $20, $3.5 Yep. Um, and you know, I went ahead and did that and went through and found all my values. So let's, uh, let's get to it. But man, enjoying the DFS. It's fun. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, all right. So quarterbacks, we start off Lamar Jackson going to Dallas in uh, one of these high scoring games. Uh, this is an over under 48 and a half. He's the top of the market. 7,500. We go down to Jalen Hurts, 7,300 CJ Stroud, 7,100. Uh, and then uh, Kyler Murray, 6,900. It falls off a little bit after that. We got Anthony Richardson, 6,700. And then everybody else is going to be in the mid sixes. Dak Prescott, I don't know what to call it, at 6,600. But it goes all the way down the cheapest. I don't, this is a little bit of a surprise to me. Will Levis, 5,200. I thought he would be above a couple guys. Um, uh, but $5,200, he's made some just bonehead yeah mistakes the, it's the similar. Josh one. Allen was doing that his first year or two, too. I don't know if Levis quite has his talent, but. To see, you would think after week one, you wouldn't see that again week two. I will point out, Levis has been, for any Levis fantasy managers out there, which I am one in a super flex league, his rushing has been a uh, kind of what I was hoping for. He's, I think he's been at like 38 and 39 yards uh, rushing or right around there the first two weeks of the season. If he continues that, that is very, very good, and that's going to make up for uh, – potentially two turnovers so um levis uh running the ball has been a, a nice surprise and also a prop to look out for yeah and the titans three point favorite over green bay in the malik willis revenge game yes game. malik willis revenge game yes that game aye, aye, aye. um quarterback wise so i was going through it this week and a big part of dfs is you're trying to shoot for the moon and win you know the strategy is different because you got to beat out thousands of people I'm making a ballsy, weird move that could easily blow up in my face and be made fun of, but I don't think anybody else is going to be – everybody's going to be on Kyler Murray at 6,900 because he's red hot. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the percentage zone, I'm making a crazy call here, and I'm going with Anthony Richardson at 6,700 because the Colts are 0-2, and they, they, they're in a must-win game. I know the Bears' defense has looked pretty good the first couple of weeks. I think this is the game where they're going to unleash the Richardson running. Bears' they, defense is I, I just I just think that this is the game that Richardson's got to run because they're in a must-win spot. And the other thing with it is I, I'm more taking him because no one else is going to take him. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just on a hunch that I think he could run for 100 yards and maybe a touchdown when no one else has him. What do you think about Derek Carr, $5,800? I, I think he kind of got to ride this thing till the wheels fall off. Uh, he was, they, as, as of Sunday night, he was 50-1 to 1 to win the MVP. Is well, that something you're at all interested in? Or okay, what? so I have a comparison, and Moody will get this too. All right. Hear me out. The Saints team, and it's early in the year, but the team, I was trying to like, you know, like what's going on here? You know, Derek Carr's in year 11, and all of a sudden he's elite. Reminds me of the 2015 Atlanta Falcons when Matt Ryan randomly won the MVP with Shanahan calling plays. A little mm, bit. A little Matt bit. Matt Ryan was really good until no, then. No, Matt Ryan was better but, than Carr, but I, it kind of is just like random. In a way, and Shan and Shanahan OC and QBX like the young OC running the same offense. Yeah. It's early, it's early, but I was like trying to come up with some kind of comparison. I mean, Derek Carr was, I don't call him like a dead dog, but like he was not a top 20 no. fantasy drafted fantasy quarterback. I think he finished like QB 17, QB 18, something around there, uh, last season, but he was not a top 20 ADP. No, and, and it, it, Matt, Matt Ryan. Let's let's not shit. I I like to shit on Matt Ryan at, as much or more than most people. He was a, he was a good player. No, he was a top five to seven fantasy quarterback yeah, going yeah. into that year. Everybody knows he's good, but I don't know. I was just trying to come up with a comparison. The other one that's a value guy, is Sam Darnold, playing well right now, and uh, Justin Jefferson looks like uh, looks like he avoided a major injury too. Yeah, so it looks like he's going to be day to day with a uh, quad, quad contusion. contusion, which is a bruise. The only thing about that is it might hurt his explosiveness. Yeah, and certainly he had that. Well, how long was that touchdown? Ninety-seven yards. I mean, that makes up a lot of Sam Darnold's yards. But yes, uh, I'm interested to see if Jordan Addison plays this weekend as well. Um, 
I'm going to be honest. Quarterbacks, I'm going to Whole Foods. Lamar Jackson, $7,500 in Dallas. We talked about this last week. In Dallas, these games, games get, get explosive. Interesting fact. I don't know if it's 12 or 13, but I believe it's in the last 13 home games for Dak Prescott. He has thrown for 250 yards or more. And this is um, all under the same motion. I believe it's Brian Schottenheimer. But those games at home, they throw the ball and they throw it a lot. Win or lose, Dak Prescott passing yardage at home. To it, buy, buy the juice down. I think it was minus 135 this past week on the DraftKings Sportsbook. Dak Prescott, 250-plus yards at home. Book it every week. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, I think Dak, when you're looking at one of the all-time like dichotomies of what the public perception versus reality of fantasy, he's awesome in fantasy. And he's a really good quarterback, and everybody just judges him because he's done bad in the playoffs. Right. But, I mean, he was the number two fantasy quarterback last year. Yep. And that Dallas offense is still going to chunk it. And so I, I don't I don't disagree with you. That's interesting. That's a fascinating game because the Ravens are zero two and Dallas just got their ass whooped. Yeah. I'm really that's a hard one to call. I'm really curious to see what happens in that matchup. Yeah, we also got Baker Mayfield, potential MVP guys. Down Mayfield's to 20, looking good. Twenty five to one MVP. Looking really good. Sixty three hundred dollars. Jared Goff in a potentially high scoring game. Uh, Sixty five hundred dollars. Geno Smith, who's played pretty well uh, at value. Fifty six hundred dollars. Um, Justin Fields is an interesting one, fifty four hundred dollars, and this is you know the game total is very low, thirty five and a half. You're not going to find really a lower total. Um, even Pat's Jets on Thursday night is like thirty eight and a half. But Justin Fields last year with <laughs> Chicago is a very good fantasy quarterback, just because of the rushing stats. No doubt, you know he's not going to air it out a ton. He made. One of the – it's hard to say, like, 10 best throws of it. He made an unbelievable throw. The throw to Pickens. Rolling right. I think I got called back because of it flag. It did, but it was unreal. But rolling to his white right, he had <coughs> no window, and he put it in perfectly over the highest-paid cornerback in football, Patrick Sertan, uh, to George Pickens. So he has – and they, they – Tom has come out saying, you know, Justin Fields, they're preparing him to start. Like, why would you mess with a good thing? They're 2-0, much to Jerry's dismay. But uh, – He's a guy, fifty four hundred dollars under cost. Can he can? I'm not saying he will, especially against the Chargers defense, which has been pretty good so far. Although we saw one game against the Panthers, so who cares? Um, he's a guy who has that ceiling at at fifty four hundred dollars potential. I'm not saying draft Justin Fields in DFS, but I'm not not saying it. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, running backs, top of the market. We got Saquon Barkley for an all of a sudden run focused Eagles team. They still get away from it a little bit, though. He was like, he was doing really well early, and then more kind of went away from it. They took him out. Like, everyone's talking about the drop at the end of the game. They had third and four on the first drive uh, where they were just, Saquon was averaging like 10 yards a carry early. They take him out, third and four. Okay, I can live with that. You know, Kenny Gainwell gets a lot of the third down run. They pass it. That's fine. They go for it on fourth and four from like the seven yard line. Um, cost them three points there. You know, obviously, uh, we know how the game turned out. But uh, Alvin Kamara, your guy, rebirth, seventy five hundred dollars. Man, like I said, I, the, the Marshall Falk greatest show on turf comparisons, catching the ball, touchdowns everywhere. He looks. He looks explosive again. He does. Because the last couple of years he hasn't looked that – you know, I know he'd had some ankle stuff, but he looks like a different dude out there. I and mean, I know things. the – what's up? And legal things. Hey, look, those are about – what's done <laughs> is done. You know, we're putting the old days in the past. Has that – has that – he, he didn't he, get suspended for that, right? No, I don't think he did. I, I, thought, would have been I thought like, it just kept getting kicked down. Well, the road. no, it was supposed to be last year because it was the yes. it was kind of similar to the Rasheed Rice thing now, where it was like they're waiting on the legal stuff. Yeah, but yeah, he looks back, and you know, it's the one thing with the Saints thing is, uh, you know, everybody's going to be on it, but you kind of just got to ride it till it falls. And the Eagles' run defense looks terrible. Yeah. It looked it looked bad against Green Bay, and it looked bad 
this week. And then, uh, you know, and you also saw, I mean, they put so much into that defensive line. Like, what the hell were they doing? The way Cousins went down the field at the end. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to imagine the Saints. I'm not saying the Saints are going to score 44 every week, but I mean, I, you got to think 28 or more is possible here. So the total in this game is 49 and a half. Do you think Alvin Kamara is worth $7,500 in DFS? My thing with that is, look, he, he he's a great value. It's 15% of the yeah, budget. yeah, but that's that's the thing. I think it may be too much. And also, like I said, I'm trying to avoid the higher high stone guys. Yeah. Uh, all right, we got Kamara 7,500. Jonathan Taylor who for some reason did not get any run in the fourth quarter last Which week. Which was very weird. $7,300. Kyron Williams, 7100 Devon Achan, $7,000. I just worry about the, the, the no two, I think, hurts everyone. And his, he catches and his, a ton of passes. That's true. In PPR. I, I believe he has seven catches in each of his first two games, which is huge for a running back in PPR. Uh, Jameer Gibbs in a potentially very high-scoring game, 6,800. That's a guy I really that, like. I'm going with that. That's that's my – I went with Gibbs this week. I feel like – I know that they're splitting time and, my, you know, they both have, yep. get a lot of things. But Gibbs, you see him popping off the screen, there's going to be a huge breakout at some point. And I think this week in Arizona feels like a good spot for it. And Montgomery doesn't – he's – like, he doesn't vulture all the goal line carries. Like, if no. Gibbs is in that series, Gibbs is going to get yeah. – the goal line carries, which is certainly encouraging for Jameer Gibbs owners. Uh, Derek Henry, who we saw come on a little bit this week, $6,500. J.K. Dobbins, $6,400. I know. I feel like uh, I like him overall, but it's just this game. Tough match. Yeah, that's the thing with it. But, I mean, first two weeks, he's looked awesome. Yep. Um, Jordan Mason, the bell of the ball, $6,200. I got him. These men, I got Gibbs and Mason's what I did. Okay. I just think the Mason thing, this Niners-Rams game, the, now the Niners have no Debo, no McCaffrey. They're going to run the ball. Uh, Mason had 146 week one and 100 week two, and I, I think until he's up to like 7,000, he's a great value as long as McCaffrey's out. Yeah. How do you feel about Charbonnet? Assuming Kenneth Walker sits, he's at $6,000 DFS. I like him. I yeah. like him. I think Seattle's going to try – especially because Seattle's going to try to run the ball. You know, they're playing against – you know, the – Miami. They're, yeah, they're playing Miami without Tua, so I think they're going to – you know, I, I don't think they're going to have some crazy wide-open game plan in the spot. Okay. Um, here's a guy I really like this week, Tony Pollard. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spears is out. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, Brian Callahan, the head coach, not the best bedside manner, I would say. They catch him on on TV, just you know, saying, you know, what the fuck are you thinking, <laughs> to Will Levis, and you know, being a little bit of a hothead. I think Ryan Fitzpatrick had a great tweet about it, where he just showed all the instances of Brian Callahan kind of being a jerk to will levis and just saying you know this makes my blood boil but then showing the next day in the press conference brian callahan has cooled down kind of takes a little bit more of a leadership role i think they have talked about it and they said last weekend in press conferences they wanted it to be more of a 50 50 split we still saw tony pollard get significantly more carries they obviously paid him uh, a lot of money this past offseason tony pollard is a guy that i think uh and i think tennessee is due i think the run defense um is very good. Uh, they're a team that I like this weekend um, to improve and win. They're playing a Packers team. It's it's a very low uh, over under 36 and a half. But I think this is a game that's going to come down to not making mistakes, run the football. I think both teams are going to try and do that. And uh, I like Tony Pollard. I, Josh Jacobs obviously got a million carries last weekend with Malik Wilson. Yeah, the uh, Green Bay running run. game. They had 235 yards rushing in the first half. You don't mm -hmm. see that in pro football. Yeah. Things tightened up in the second half. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Colts had a chance to win that game. But, um, yeah, I like, I, I like Tennessee this weekend. And I like Tony Pollard. Um, what else we got? Alexander Madison has been pretty good the first couple of games. Yeah, he's uh, so he's the third down back. He's catching the ball, and, and Zamir White's like the, the runner on the first two downs. Yeah. A potential value, Bucky Irving, fifty one hundred dollars. We we do not know Rashad White's status as of taping right now. It's Wednesday morning. We are taping this. Uh, injury reports come out Wednesday to see if guys uh, practice in full, limited practice, not practice, etc. Um, so we'll find that out later today. But that is one value to keep an eye. And Irving's look better run the ball. Rashad White has twenty five carries for forty nine yards this year. But you're okay. Good. You're making me feel good because i've got them on both my teams not worried i watch the ultimate you i watch every run play from both bucky what i will say rashad white does remind me a little bit and, and i'm not going to compare him to this guy because Le'Veon bell is like you know uh, was like the top fantasy running back for a two-year period probably he has a similar patient running style where he doesn't always hit the hole immediately he's going to wait for his block set up and then he's going to go um which can be effective but his yards per carry has not been good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a little bit kind. Of, I kind of throw out the first two years. I'm really looking at this year. This year he has not been good. The line has not been great. 
running the football. Bucky Irving has one very explosive one. He had run. He had a 31 yard run the first week. Rashad White had a 15 yard carry. Uh, Bucky Irving had I think one that was like eight and one that was like 10. But outside of that, they have not run the football well. The blocking has not been consistent for the Bucks running the football. They need it to be. Rashad White only had one catch this past week. He obviously left the game with an injury. Came back. Wasn't really the same. Didn't handle a, a, a very big workload. Um, not super worried about Bucky Irwin taking the job yet. We'll see what Rashad White's injury status is yet. But when they are both healthy, Rashad White's not getting phased out of this game. He's a much better pass blocker, much better receiver. Um, running the football, Bucky Irving is very decisive. He's going to see the hole. He's going to hit it immediately. So there is a difference, and I do think there is value in having both of them as a, as a Bucks fan on the team. As a fantasy manager, it is frustrating, especially a guy who was beating the Rashad White drum before the season started. I still think he is going to be a very good running back, fantasy running back. He was in week one. Um, I anticipate that moving forward because he's also going to get goal line carries. Uh, but these two switch. It's typically two series Rashad White, one series Bucky Irving. So um, when healthy, I'm interested to see how that continues. Um, all right, rest of the uh, running backs. One guy who I'm a little bit – or uh, two, two, two guys I'm interested to see. I want to see if Blake Corum gets a little bit more work. He did this past week. It was a blowout, so it was garbage time. He, he You know, not a ton of run, $4,600. I'm interested to see how his role develops. Kyron Williams not particularly effective this past week. No, I'm just worried about the offensive line. Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, a that, ton of guys. That, that's, that's what's concerning me right now. And then one guy I'm also interested to see – if he's going to emerge, is Deuce Vaughn? Mm. He's Dallas. got. There's a. There is a chance there because that role. I mean, they. It looks open. Yeah, four thousand dollars in DFS. I'm not necessarily recommending that you, uh, you know, buy Deuce Vaughn this week. But I'm just saying he's a guy to keep an eye on. Obviously, way under cost right now, four thousand dollars. We did see him start to get some carries and catches last week. Uh, this is a game against Baltimore. It could be pretty explosive. If you need to save a ton of money, he's not the worst option at four thousand dollars. But I'm not recommending him. Um, all right, wide receivers. We got top of the market, C.D. Lamb. Again, no surprise there, $8,800. That touchdown he had against the Saints was incredible. He was bracketed. They had him dead to rights on a tackle, and he just ducked out yeah. of it and, and ran the other way for it. That was an incredible play. Uh, Justin Jefferson, $8,600. I, I feel like that's a fade off the quad contusion. I just feel like that. even if he plays, he's not going to be 100%. Yeah. Tyreek Hill, $8,400. No chance. I'm on our St. Brown. We'll see if he plays, what his injury status is, $8,200. It did not look good when he got hurt last week. So um, Marvin Harrison Jr. seventy four hundred dollars or Devonta Adams seventy six hundred. We got Nico Collins, who's who's kind of emerged as the number one guy yeah. there, which was a question going no, through. No, I agree. I kind of didn't know what to think out of Nico Diggs and Dell going in, and so I didn't really target any of them in the drafts because of that. No, watching Sunday night, it was pretty apparent who the number one guy is. So Nico Collins seventy three hundred dollars. Um, I'll go through a couple more. There's one guy I want to point out. Devontae Smith, $6,900. Zay Flyer, 68 DJ Moore, 67 Chris Godwin, $6,500. is having a, a very good season. Stephon Diggs is $6,600. Oh, Vikings. This game's in Minnesota. I like it. I like it. I That's like it. Point. And I also think the Diggs theory here, too, I don't see a lot of value in the very top of the market this week. Because, like I said, Tyreek, 80, you know, you, you don't yeah. want to deal with that quarterback situation. Jefferson's banged up. No, I like that. I like that Dick's call. Yeah. Uh, Malik Neighbors off a huge week. He got 20 targets this past wow, week. Wow, it's like Cooper Cup. Yeah. Um, but he is going against Denzel Ward. Yes. Be careful. But Do, Wondell Robinson? Uh, I mean, it's, it's going to be Daniel Jones. I think Daniel Jones is going to have a shit game against that D-line. Very I just think – I just I, – I don't know. I thought they had a good matchup against the Commanders last week because they got one of the worst secondaries. But I think this week it could get a little ugly. Yeah. Um, Brandon Ayuk, a potential value at $6,200. Maybe he bounces back from, you know, missing all that time in training camp. And no Debo. Um, Debo Samuel out. Yep. Um, Jamison Williams, a guy like $5,800. Yeah, I've got – I went with him, especially with the Monra being banged up. Yep. And then the high over under. And then just – you know, I mean, not to beat the dead horse, but this is DFS. You want those guys that can hit those 70-yard touchdowns because that's what's going to win you the 500K or whatever. If you're going to be betting props in Jamison Williams and looking at receiving yards, I would look at rushing plus receiving because there are times where he can get little handoffs and reverses mm -hmm. um, in the backfield. That's also a C.D. Lamb thing. Also. And, and I, Xavier Worthy could be in that line too. Yep, Jaden Reed especially. 
Uh, Rashid Shahid, $5,300. That's another one. Home I'm, run threat. Yeah, in a dome game. I'm mad I didn't have him last week. Uh, I've got him, and I was looking at Tank Dell as well at 5200 mm-hmm. Kind of in the same vein. I feel like he's going to break out at some point. But maybe, I'll, you know, Diggs I think is more the natural call in Minnesota. Yep. But Dell is good value at 5200 uh, I actually have uh, I have Dell and uh, Shahid, and then I went with Lave 6300 too because – I don't know. I just had the Philly defense, man. That was, dude, they, I mean, you see what Mooney did against them? Yeah. I don't know. I didn't like what I – I thought Philly's defense was going to be better than this, man. They look – Some they, of the hangover from last year is potentially carrying over. And they played well against Green Bay and won, but that was a close game. They should have won this. They should be 2-0. and But obviously, um, some dropped the yeah, A couple other uh, long shots. So, Jawan Jennings is cheap at 4,100. Tight end. What's up? Tight end, Jawan Jennings. What? I'm talking about the Niners. Oh, oh, oh you're sorry, getting John Johnson. John Johnson. Jo- no, I was saying Juwan, Juwan Jennings though. It's stepping into the role now as the number two with yes. Debo out, forty one hundred bucks. And then this is a crazy one, and it's only for PPR, and you're going to laugh your ass off. There's only one person that benefits from this Bryce Young to Andy Dalton swap, and that's Adam Thielen in the slot because Andy Dalton is going to be throwing short to the slot a ton. Okay. And so that's like a PPR call. And if you're wanting seven catches for sixty three yards to get thirteen point three points. Game. That's – I think Thielen – I think look out for Thielen's reception over. Like, I'm not saying he's going to, like, have touchdowns or yep. score points, but I just – I've watched Andy Dalton. They start with the Saints, and he's going to be looking at those short slot. You know, I feel like that's a natural yep. combo right there. We have some interesting values in uh, the Rams offense. Demarcus Robinson, $5,000. Tyler Johnson, 4700 Jordan Whittington, 4200 uh, Which one of those guys stands out to you? I like the wit man, I mean, I just I went on Johnson last week and got burned. Robinson caught that fifty yarder. Uh I kind of think I'm gonna go with the Whittington forty two hundred because I think McVeigh's gonna be in the lab this week without Cooper and Nuke, Cooper Cup and Nuqua. And he's gonna be uh he's gonna be like you know, he's gotta figure something out. Yep. And I think Whittington could get featured a little bit this week. So I think I like that. All right. Uh Michael Wilson, forty one hundred is a guy I like at value. Um should also point out Robbie Chosen. $3,000. I don't know if they're going to try and manufacture some offense um, there, but uh, he's like bottom of the market. I'm not recommending him, but if you need a cost savings, you could do worse at $3,000. Um, tight ends. Trey McBride, top of the market, $6,200. We got Sam Laporta, who's been pretty disappointing this year, $6,000. Kittle, $5,700. Brock Bowers. Bowers. Gronk saying that Bowers is going to be better than him was wild. I did not hear that. Or he he, was, he said something like that on really? the halftime. He said he's gonna be. You know, he he loves him. I I keep meaning to do this. I have a. There was a crazy route that Brock Bowers ran week one that I watched. Um, something I want to point out: if you're doing DFS NFL Plus Premium, there's a pro model in there, which is a feature of it. You can search by player. I started doing this this past weekend, where if I'm gonna bet a guy's prop or put them in DFS, I'm going to watch all their targets from the week before. Very interesting, because before you could not do that. Um, this is very easy, very sortable. You can you know digest your whole lineup in under an hour. Uh, very, very fun tool. Brock Bowers, I watched all his targets from week one. Um, I took his over three and a half catches last week, because he did catch a bunch of dump offs, and then he had a 26-yard gain, which was an incredible route. Um, interesting play at $5,400. He's been very good so far this year. No, and the targets are there. He looks good. Look, I, 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 I agree. Okay. I, I think he's 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 elite. And you know, the, we saw Laporte did it last year. You, rookie tight ends usually that's a big transition. Yep. But it seems like he's uh, he's able to do it. Yeah. We got Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely, almost the same price. Mark Andrews forty eight hundred. Isaiah Likely forty seven hundred. Is there one of those two guys you like more? Than I put Likely in there at forty seven hundred, but uh, you know that's just because it's a higher over under kind of game. And Likely, I, they use him at receiver some, and they kind of push the ball down the field to him. Yeah, we got the aforementioned Dallas Goddard, forty six hundred dollars. Taysom Hill, your guy, thirty eight hundred dollars. Only thing this, about him, he's banged up. He yeah. had a chest injury. Yeah. They they came out with it, and uh, he wasn't used. To, the one thing about Sunday, they didn't use him in the game plan that much. Yep. Uh, Gerald Everett, who is uh, an interesting uh, potential add under cost, thirty one hundred dollars. He's playing a little bit. Uh, he's like kind of splitting time with Cole. Yeah, Clemens, they're going so. to Everett more in the passing game and going away from commit. The problem is, is this Caleb Williams thing. It's just, it's, it's, it's not. I need, I need to see yardage before I can commit. I was interested in potentially betting Cole Komet this past weekend in a bounce back game, and I listened to the press conferences, and 
there were some pretty interesting things said about Cole Komet because his snap count was down week one, and they asked, like, hey, is that a mistake? Like, what, did you maybe mean to play him more? And they were pretty much like, nope. Like, it was correct. Like, we have another good tight end in Gerald Everett, which I thought was like, I mean, they just re-signed Cole Komet to a, to, a, to a sizable deal, but the fact that they're kind of openly shitting on him um, was, was an interesting comment, so I, I stayed away Maybe from Maybe the new OC doesn't stuff. like him. I don't know. Maybe. Um, Taysom Hill, $3,800. Gerald Everett, $3,100. We got Greg Dulcich, $2,900, bottom of the market. Foster Moreau, who I think you can do worse with. No, no, he's, he's he the... Some red zone targets. No, he, he, and he scored a touchdown week one. Yep. Um, all right. Defense, special teams. Uh, we got the Browns at the top of the market going against the Giants, $3,800. Are they worth the price here? Yes. Yeah. Yes, because this could be... With that D-line, they, they... I could... The Daniel Jones... When I'm looking for the DFS defenses, I want to see guys their turnovers, big yep. plays, and I think Cleveland that gets Daniel Jones could force could force some stuff. So, I I, I don't think paying the premium is is the worst idea. Uh, Tampa three thousand against yeah. Denver and Bo Nix. Anytime Bo Nix takes the field right now, you you want the other defense. I tell you what, I watched every play from the Bucks Lions game all twenty two. Their secondary was lights out, and that with all the injuries too. Yes. Jordan Whitehead was incredible from the safety spot, stopping the run, had some nice pass breakup. Zion McCollum had an interception early, was very active in the pass game with a couple of passes defense. Um, very, very good. Sarasia Dennis, a linebacker who's like kind of a reserve linebacker that plays on third downs when KJ Brick goes out, was outstanding. This is a this is this was one of the guttiest Buccaneers wins I've seen in years. This I, this team, like I was, I, I did think they were going to win the division. I didn't think they were going to be incredible. I thought they'd be around nine and eight, ten and seven. This is a legitimate team. They, they are blowing no, I agree. Off of me. And and I'll go ahead and just say it. Uh, we're three weeks out from it. The Buck Saints in the dome. I'm going yeah. October thirteenth. I'm pretty. All of a sudden, stakes looking a little high. Should be a pretty good game. America's Should, game of the week, maybe. It could be. Um, all right, we got Chargers thirty six hundred dollars. 49ers, $3,500. Seahawks, $3,500. Steelers, $3,300. The, the Seahawks one's interesting in case things really go bad. Yes. I think Seattle is a very, very good defense. Yeah, and Montgomery, their coach, is, they, you know, they kind of got that Ravens attitude on defense. So. Uh, uh, Michael McDonald, yes, against, against I, I Miami and, and uh, Scott. I don't know why I said that. I'm sorry. I got conf- Mark, Mark, the basketball coach, Montgomery. Apology accepted. <laughs> Steelers, uh, $3,300. Packers. Thirty-three hundred dollars against Will Levis and the Titans. On the other end, we got the Titans uh, against Malik Willis. And they know a lot about Malik Willis. You think they do? Yeah. He does. He didn't pass the ball very much, but I mean, they ran the ball such such success. I'm interested to see the Titans have a good run defense anchored by Jefferson. They have they have a good defensive line. Are they going to make Malik Willis throw? If so, that could get interesting. That could be a very good value. Yeah, uh, twenty seven hundred dollars. Um, all right. So, are there any guys that you're going to plant your flag? They're your guy in every lineup, no matter what you love, whether it be the value or just the upside this weekend, Mitzi. I mean, it just is what it is. The the, the Shahid thing at fifty two hundred. And I, I just think the value's there. He's getting the targets. The Saints' offense is red hot, and the Eagles' secondary did not impress me Sunday. And I just think at the 5,200 is great value. And uh, neck and neck with Jameson Williams, too, with Amonra being hurt. I think both of those guys, just the upside's so big on them. Yeah. Uh, my guy this week, and I said I was going to go top of the market, Whole Foods with Lamar Jackson. I'm not going to throw anything out like that because that can just kind of hamstring your whole lineup. I like Tony Pollard, $6,000. I think he's going to have a really good Jonathan Taylor. Had a monster game uh, last week against Green Bay. Running the ball, Saquon had a huge week, week one running the ball. Tony Pollard gets carries. Tony Pollard's going to produce. He can also catch the ball. Um, so PPR, obviously, um, uh, that that's going to be a value. Uh, Tony Pollard, I think, is a must play this week at $6,000. I like defense. that, too. Like, to reiterate it, I don't think people are going to have their eyes on that Green Bay-Tennessee game on the DFS. And, you know, so much of this is hitting. You know, you, you want to kind of zag yeah. when people are zigging. Or zig when people are zagging, whatever the statement is. Yeah. And so I like that Tony Pollard call. Uh, also got Moody sent in his lineup, and so I want to read it. Moody, so for people uh, watching for Moody Mac, he is uh, – we're having some audio issues with his stuff, so he's unable All right, to – Moody's got – Brock. He, Moody has Brock Purdy against the Rams, Gibbs against Arizona, A-Chain because the way he catches the ball against Seattle. His receivers are Brandon Ayuk, so he's got a stack with Purdy and Ayuk against the Rams. 
Uh, Michael Wilson for cheap, 4,100. And, yeah, he went, and then he went Stephon Diggs, 6,600. In the old Revenge Vikings game, which I love that theory. He's got George Kittle at tight end at 5,700. Obviously, Kittle got a lot of targets last week and benefits from Debo being out. So, Moody went huge on the Niners here. Went Purdy, you can Kittle. Back. And then in his flex, Dante Foreman. Cheap. Okay. Yep. And I could see the Foreman thing, too, because Ford's just a guy, too. So, I had heard prior to the season starting that the team liked Deontay Foreman more than Jerome Ford. He just had that concussion where he got helicoptered out in training camp. Yeah. Um, but then, obviously, you know, week one doesn't really play. Um, but then week two, after, you know, injury, he gets in, and he's not particularly effective. 14 carries and give, like, 42 yards. Um, but the volume is there, and at cost could be an option. What's the cost for Deontay Foreman? Do you see that? Uh, he's got it at uh, 4,400. And, okay. then, and then Moody, I actually like this defense call. He went the Colts, Fade, and Caleb Williams at 3,200. I, I, I'm interested to see Caleb Williams on – I was not discouraged at all uh, on Sunday night. His line is bad. I, I don't think this is a Caleb Williams problem. I I'm think worried about line. how bad the line is with him getting gun shot, though. Like, I just, yep. he really, I mean, that was hard to watch in the second half. Yeah. I mean, that happened to Bryce Young last year. I'm looking at him now. No, no. That's what I'm saying. It looked like that bad. It was jarring. Yeah. But, you know, he makes the big throw to get them, you know, potentially uh, on the way for a game-winning drive, and then, you know, obviously the line kind of falls uh, But apart. The, the no Keenan Allen, if they would have had him, they that would help them on Sunday. Yeah. Um, all right, that is it for Fantasy Football Factory Week 3. For the King of South Minty, for Moody Mac behind the sticks, I am Stephen Shea. Good luck in your DFS lineups. Um, again, we're going to be in the part of my take award-winning listener group award-winning listeners group um and then do some you know million dollar tickets off of that but um thank you Mitz. any final words all right good luck i just just good luck dodging the body count boys because uh you know so much of fantasy Definitely it ain't just about the draft players. it's about it's about managing your roster and people are getting put to the test here early all right see you guys